There is an old myth that tells the story of a time when the waters of the earth overflowed and the skies were full of flames. The moon stepped down to earth and with it came the beings of water. Fulfilled with the knowledge of thousands of years, they brought technologies to humankind which would hail a new era. However, the beings of water disappeared, leaving nothing behind but their story. And just like so many tales that have gone before, the story passed into legend. It faded from memory and was forgotten until today. Hello and welcome to uh, Let's pay Play Perry Roden, which depending on which market you're in, is either going to be Perry Roden and the Immortals of Terra, or Perry Roden and the Myth of the Iluchim. Um, so, this isn't completely blind. Excuse me. Um, I have played this as a kid. I got, I think, about halfway through it. I don't know for sure how far I got, but I made it to, uh, um, well, spoilers if you don't want to hear anything, uh, but I made it to a museum on the moon of Titan, I think, but my, it's been a long time, and my memory is very, very limited. Uh, I did try recording an episode of this earlier, but couldn't get the video to show up, which I think I've got solved now. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, let's just check to see if anything else got messed up. It looks like that is not the case. Um, so the settings all seem to be good. Um, and I will say I did notice during the first area, at least, I didn't finish it in the episode. Because it's, you know, it's an adventure game. It takes a fair amount of time just going through, talking to people, looking at things, collecting things. Um, but I did notice my memory was starting to come back a little bit. Uh, not a ton, but... Uh, with that being said, though, let's get started. Terrania, capital of Terra, the political center of the League of Free Terrans in the year 1346 New Galactic Calendar. 
having to watch the seeds one sows grow, bloom and wilt over and over again. I'm sorry, sir, but we have a problem with the outer defensive shields. What? Two billion solar masses in the Milky Way. Enough space for everybody, one would think. Define problem. Terrania's defensive shield has been partially deactivated. Everyone wants what others have. Planets, resources, weapons, life, and immortality. A whole universe full of enemies. Lieutenant, what happened? I was just coming to see you. Status report. I can't give you a report at the moment. What happened to the defense shields? Some have been deactivated, and some of the generators were hit. That's all we know right now. Okay, I want all available forces deployed, and a report on exactly what happened as soon as possible. I'm sorry, Regent, but the Residence Minister has limited your authority according to Martial Law, Paragraph 13, Section 2. But that only applies if I'm the one in danger. That is correct, sir. Reginald Bull has given orders that you may not leave the residence until further notice. That is, until he has contacted you personally. It's for your own security. And when will that be? Reginald Bull is currently on a restrictive mission and has ordered an absolute communication blackout for as long as the situation persists. What? Until I receive different orders, I must ensure that you do not leave the residence's secure levels and that you do not communicate with anyone beyond these levels. I'm sorry, Regent. Bully had better have a very good explanation for all this. Anything else? That is all. I have to find out what happened here and who's behind this attack. Bully's got to be off his rocker if he thinks I'm gonna hang around here until he returns from his so-called restrictive mission. The leader of all mankind and his first, uh, his first instinct is to run off and investigate on his own. I mean, granted, I guess he's got the stupid law that lets Bully, uh, uh, do this to him, but... Uh, just an introduction to our interface real quick. We see this is our communicator slash log. So residents, uh, we can see it looks like there will be maybe six chapters. There might be more if it gives us an option to scroll through these tabs. Uh, somebody was able to attack the solar residents by partially deactivating the energy source for the defensive shields. Bully has therefore set a curfew and imposed a total communication ban on me. Must find out why he's done this and exactly what happened. And I think if we right click, yep, that gives us the description. Multifunction wristband G-1215. The integrated positronic stores all the data and information that has been discovered and produces short reminder memos when necessary. The user can drag an object from the inventory onto the symbol or simply right click the symbol to find out about something. In addition, the wristband contains a semantic room scanner. When the S button is pressed, the scanner is activated and the semantronic... Semantronic? shows objects in the room which are connected to a current search or question or which contribute to the resolution of an existing problem. This special model also contains a DNA converter. This enables users to transform into the colonial Terran Laszlo Daikanu, overriding all biometric data in the process. That's a very specific dis disguise. Uh, just a couple of thoughts on the intros. One, uh, obviously Perry doesn't know this, but it looks like the people who found that wreck uh, were Arkanoids, I think they're called. Uh, the white-haired people that are, like, kind of an antagonist uh, that are basically just a race of arrogant humans with space travel. Uh, so Reginald Bull, also known as Bully. 
Harry Roden's best friend and residence minister for the League of the Def for League Defense also possesses relative immortality. So those two are, I think, the main characters of the Perry Roden series in the comics and the books and what have you. Which, uh, again, for the American audience here, um, or I guess I went outside Germany for that matter, uh, Perry Roden is to Germany like Doctor Who is to the UK or Star Trek is to the United States. It is like their um, flagship sci-fi series. Um it started in the 60s, I want to say, and uh, it's been ever running ever since. So let's take a look around this room now. The debris and shards of the Globosphere, it would have taken quite an impact to break this gamma glass. Um, oh, actually, one more thought about the intro is I forget what Mandra Diamond is supposed to be. But whatever it is, she's lying <laughs> because... Those were some ridiculous moves she pulled. She is not some archaeologist or whatever the hell she's supposed to be, scientist. She's got moves. Which was some really nice animation, by the way. I like the choreography on that. A um, little bit possibly of an inconsistency with those pods. I noticed that from one angle, there were, I think, four pods. But then the angle where they show them uh, trailing in on the residents, there are only three. But then the look to be between six and eight robots, so I would assume based on that, um well, six eight robots. She destroyed two, I think. She kicked the third one off, but I would expect that they have uh rocket boosters or something to enable them to fly. Because obviously they gotta get off the residence after they got her, so uh in any case, let's check our semantic room scanner. I wish that we Quit blinking, because I don't think uh, think I can interact. I don't think it's got any more to tell me. Where's my mouse? Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, so yeah, in order to get this working, I, I'm actually playing in windowed mode, or kind of a windowed full screen. Not my favorite solution, but was the easiest one I stumbled across. So, and the positronics for the door opener also seem to be damaged. Now I can't even get into my own office. Where's a technician when you need one? You can usually read the room numbers here, but the power supply seems to have been cut. I don't think the door plates are going to be much help right now. I don't think the door plates are going to be much help right now. All right. You can usually read the room numbers here, but the power supply seems to have been cut. So those are pretty, uh... So there's actually a difference, I think, because there's here, which is an exit. Is this the one? That's Atlan's office. He's off doing something to save our galaxy as usual. It looks like his door's been damaged, too. But it's got that thing over it, which is basically their way of saying you can't get in. And this is supposed to be Bully's office. Of course, the door to Bully's office is closed, too. But perhaps I'll find something inside that might be useful. All right, so the rest of that is mostly repeat dialogue. You used to be able to see the whole Milky Way in this Globosphere. It doesn't look as though it can be repaired. The robot... A deactivated cleaning robot. Not much of a help right now. Alright, so let's see what else we got. This is someone's door. Alright, give me my mouse back. <laughs> ah, where is it? There it is. Okay. That's Gookie's office. Gookie isn't there, but his door seems to have been damaged during the attack. I don't think the door plates are going to Gookie's office. Oh. You can usually read the room right. numbers here, don't but the power hear it. <laughs> supply seems to have been cut. Looks like secondary damage from a Gatesian impulse laser. The outside force field stabilizer for the defensive shield was hit. That was probably the actual target. Is that the uh, same dialogue? I wonder. Uh... Oh, wait, what? Surveillance center. Okay. Where in the world am I? This isn't the surveillance center. Something seems to be wrong with the transmitters. Wait a second. Where's he off to? I want to know how it thinks window equals go in the transmitter that's not even on the screen, but whatever. Also, eyes are creepy in that thing. Uh, okay, so there's nothing really to look at here. Nice background. Uh, probably would look nicer if I wasn't uh, playing it at a slightly bigger than native resolution. 
because uh, <laughs> you can really tell that's just a JPEG or something, but um, definitely a beautiful city. I mean, at least from what we can see of it. This force field stabilizer for the residence's defensive shield has been hit as well. The attackers knew exactly what to target. It begs the question of where they got their information. Definitely starts making it look like an inside job. All right, Mouse, where are you? There you are. They didn't skimp on the artillery. Getting through that tarred steel isn't exactly what you'd call a piece of cake. They seem like parts of some sort of glider. The owner of this hangar doesn't seem to care too much about neatness. All right, not much here, so I guess we'll just continue on. A source of energy for a larger mechanotronic device. Seems to be the only thing that's working around here. Oh, let's talk to this guy. Oh, hello, Regent. I'm Yuri, Mondra Diamond's hangar attendant. My goodness, what happened? This is Mondra's hangar? Yes. Why do you ask? What happened to Mondra? They shot at us. Calm down, Yuri. It's all over now. I need power for the office level. That was attacked as well? Oh, no. But there are some old temporary and maintenance positronics here in the maintenance room. What a coincidence. Thanks a lot for the information. I help wherever I can. Thank you, Yuri. Normally, this is used to recharge the gliders, but this one here seems to be broken. I don't think he gives us any more information. How may I help you this time, Regent? Yeah. All right. Let's talk to this guard here. Sir, I am not allowed to take orders from anyone other than the resident's Minister Bull. I am sorry. Well, let's see you stop me take this glider. Ah, Mondra's glider. Well, that's something anyway. I never knew she had her own hangar for it. Sir, this glider may not be used at the moment. Don't you know who I am? Of course, sir, but I have my orders. The airspace above the residence is not secure. What are you going to do? Shoot me, the, the regent? The symbol of the League fleet. As a former employee of the Terran League service, Mondra still holds the status of a fleet colonel in the reserve. And I think that's all we can do here. Yeah, so that's just a large click box for the uh, for the glider there. Let's see what's behind door number one. One of the many residence chambers that I know nothing about. Looks like the interior of a blues shuttle. All right, let's see what we're dealing with. Just two panels here. Without power, it's hard to say what this terminal is used for. All right, what about this one? Uh, level 4.5 temporary energy switch, power switch, sure. The temporary power supply for the upper levels of the solar residence has been activated. Hmm, a diagram, 936, that's my room number. 479 and 836 are Atlans and Gookies, I think. Perhaps I can activate the doors again with this. So, this is our first, well, depending on which direction you go, I guess, our first puzzle in the game. And basically, it's pretty simple. Um, they give you six numbers here to work with, with these codes preset. And while you can't use these doors, you can use them to figure out your door code. And then eventually, um, Mandra's door code and Bully's door code. So, first number is 9, which is going to be that 8 looking thing. Second number 3, which is going to be this H. And third number 6, which is going to be whatever the hell that is. Ooh, yeah, our door is now open. We'll have to come here later when we get the um, door codes for the other doors. Uh, residents, the transmitters will only bring you to the station last visited before the attack. This means that... One will only take you to Mondra's glider hangar. Her glider would be an excellent way to escape. I'll have to find a way to distract the guards, though. I've activated the temporary power supply for the office levels. The control panel is also connected to the power supply, which can be used to unlock the doors to the individual offices. If I want to have a look around Bully's and Mondra's offices, I'll need their room numbers. 
though. I do like this preview that shows you uh, where you're going um, when you transition areas. I think that's a really nice quality of life dealio here, so. All right, so let's head up. Creepy eyes. All right, so at the very least, uh, hey, clean bot. Cleaning bottom. robot doing what it does best, cleaning. All right, let's see what bully's door number is. Nine three eight. I think I can remember that for a little bit. Uh. So let's quick head back. Uh, I think for some puzzles you will need, you know, pen and paper. This one's easy enough that, and quick enough that I can hopefully do it before I forget. All right, so nine three. Uh, so obviously first number is going to be the H again, or the 8, then the uh, H, and now 8 is, according to this, a big ol'. There we go. So that should unlock Bully's room for it. Wait, before we go, let's check this thing out. It's a terminal for manually coordinating the various maintenance units. Perhaps one of them could help me get out of this place. I should definitely get someone to repair it. Oh, okay. Um... We'll mess with that later. I like how there's a random light display on the door there, which I don't know what the purpose of that is. It looks cool, but again, I don't know what it's supposed to be doing or representing. That guard's got his eye on us. And we do see the terminal ended up in our um, database here. Maintenance terminal. Broken control panel for maintenance units. Someone should repair it. Hey, a new guy. Excuse me, what are you doing there? Several parts of the outer shield were hit during the attack. I'm scanning the bionic structure with these thermal glasses. Each organism reacts to stress individually and produces heat, like during an infection. I can use these glasses to detect that heat and heal the damage more easily. I think the damage is where the big hole is right now. Just saying. <laughs> like, I, I I get it. That's f fine on, like, a microfracture level, but when there's a big gaping hole... I'd never met you until today, Regent. And now, so often. It's just a shame that circumstances are so... unfortunate. All right. Well, now we should be able to get into the offices, so we will take a peek in there. Did we get new information? No. We didn't. Uh, let's start with our office. And that's a lot to take in. All right. My cleaning robot. I've named it Piggy because it eats anything that falls on the floor. Unfortunately, that also includes things that fall on the floor accidentally. All I can do then is press the reverse button, and that's a real mess. The latest in my paperback series. Unfortunately, reality isn't quite as the authors of these novels portray it. <laughs> we'll dig at the authors of the Perry Rodin series, I guess. This is my info terminal with all the latest news of the day. Unfortunately, I don't pay as much attention to all this administrative stuff as I should. It's one of my weaknesses. But, there's a holo message from Mandra. Hello, Perry. Unfortunately, I'm not as patient as you are, and you're never available when someone wants to talk to you. Listen, I found out some quite alarming things regarding the charity exhibition I'm planning at the Thora Museum on Titan. I'm about to go and meet Bully on the terrace. There's something going on with Martel that he might be able to explain to me. But I'd prefer it if you were there, too. Perhaps you'll be able to make it? 
Hmm. So maybe Mandra wasn't the intended target. Maybe it was Bully or this Martel or... E oh, no. She wants Bully to tell her about Martel. Uh, so maybe it was Bully or even me. Well, um, Perry. Not me, but uh, you know what I mean. And who wasn't there? Me. I just hope nothing's happened to you. And what do Martel and Bully have to do with it? Wait a second. There's a message from Martel, too. Perry, I'd like to talk to you alone as soon as possible. The best place to meet would be in my robotics lab in the Warringer Academy. It's about a new technology that we're developing, and I don't want it to fall into the wrong hands. I'll tell you more when I see you. Okay, it doesn't look as though this new technology has anything to do with Mondra's abduction. But I haven't heard anything from Martel in months. So I'll ask him about it, at least. Contact Imo Martel. The Muse Blackout has been activated. All outgoing lines are blocked until further notice. Please try again later. The Residence Minister thanks you for understanding. Now I can't even contact the outside world anymore. Bully's got a lot to make up for the next time I see him. Alright, well, let's take a look around our office a bit more. Okay, so something's got a huge hitbox there. <laughs> The last time I visited a tea house in my holo suite, the tea tasted like the smell of Gookie's feet. I've not really been into holo vacations since then. <laughs> my last lighter, a present from Bully. That looks like a pistol or something. An old space helmet. The things we used to wear a thousand years ago. Goodness knows what we looked like back then. But it was really fashionable at the time. Solar. This was the currency of the Solar Empire for more than 1,500 years. Okay, so that seems to be all incidental stuff. Uh, I guess the, the next thing to do would be to head up on here. Alright, what do we got here? Just the terminal, nothing else. Figured this would be like his grand seat or something. Can't look out the windows, I guess. My Positronics, Lautzi, the largest computer on Terra. It includes the largest database of information in the galaxy. I can check up on anyone and anything here. Okay. So this is basically a deeper version of uh, our wristband that gives us even more information. So Reginald Bull, also known as Bully, born in Queens, New York, United States of America, on 14th of May, 1938. Terry Roden's oldest friend, and thanks to a cell activator, the third oldest living Terran. He is a sociable person, fond of alcohol and beautiful females. Rumor has it that he has visited numerous space saloons and tried every culinary specialty throughout the Milky Way. The risk pilot, electronics engineer, and specialist engineer for atomic jet engines served as an officer in the American Intelligence Service until 1971, then he became captain of the U.S. Space Force. During the Stardust mission, he became the second person after Perry Roden to step onto the moon on 19th of July, 1971. There, they met a group of Arcanides, forced to make an emergency landing on the moon. The Stardust crew succeeded in helping the Arcanides, and with their aid, Roden founded the Third Power. He and his comrades thus initiated the expansion of mankind into space. In 1976, at the age of 37, Bully received his first cell shower treatment. From 1990 to 2115, he served as Ministry, uh, or sorry, Minister of Security, head of the Space Fleet, and Deputy to the First Administrator, Terry Roden. After that, he served as Vice Administrator of the United Empire until 2329, becoming head of the Explorer Fleet in 2130. 2326, he was granted the Cell Activator, thus, like Perry, achieving relative immortality. In 2329 to 3460, he held the post of State Marshal and Vice Great Administrator of the Solar Empire. 3540, as the light of reason, he banished Perry Roden from Terra and served as Governor of the Aphilic Earth until 3580. Following his deliverance from the Medallion's influence, Bully became spokesman of the Cosmic House from 3588 1NGE to 448 NGE. He has served as resident minister for the league, for league defense since 1291 NGE. So, NGE must be their new time scale. Um, kind of wondering what event happened that was so monumental that they decided to make a new time scale, but... Alright, maintenance terminal. Control panel for maintenance unit. Comprised of control and panel, the casual preposition for the words... 
Oh, causal, maybe? Causal preposition for it. The words maintenance and unit in the plural indicator S may describe a veneered board for paneling walls or lining ceilings by means of which or by which a type of monitoring or control but commutative unitary ring of measures to delay the increase of existing reserves may be exercised. Uh, you are on point about two-thirds of the way through. <laughs> but that last line uh, seems a, a little specific. Uh, commutative, I don't exactly know what that means. I'd have to look it up. But unitary ring of measures to delay decrease of existing reserves may be exercised. That sounds like uh, the ring of measurements or, uh, well, measures might also mean um, like controls to delay the decrease of existing reserves power. So maybe that's specific to this power control panel and not... Um, Control panel for maintenance unit in general. Oh, there's one more thing I forgot to look up. Ar uh, Emil Martel. As a highly decorated former member of the armed forces, Martel exudes resolute and overbearing authority. He is convinced of the Terran's superiority over all other races and would do anything to prove it. The third child of a glider engineer, Martel was born in Luna City Moon on 1st July 1284 NGE. Excuse me and began his military career at the Koram Khan Cadet School in New Islamabad, graduating in Centronics and Mechatronics. During his subsequent training as a space pilot at the New Delhi College of Space Flight, his tremendous ambition enabled him to graduate summa cum laude from his study of robotics and mathematics in 1307. Instead of training at a space flight academy, however, Martel switched to military service, where he served first as sergeant and later as petty officer second class. From 1308 to 1315, he served as a crew member of various battleships and battle cruisers in the outer sector, volunteering for numerous special assignments and combat missions. He was awarded many decorations, including the LFT Medal of Valor. I think that's the League Fleets of Terra. Um, and promoted to the rank of Major. In 1316, he returned to Terra, where he graduated from the Conrad Deering House Space Academy in a very short time. He met his future wife and henceforth devoted himself to researching and developing new military technologies at the Institute for Reinforcement, Columbia. In 1335, he was appointed Residence Minister for Science and Engineering, being replaced by Malcolm S. Dalian in 1343. Perry wrote and appointed him Director of the Robotics Institute at the Warringer Academy in October 1343. In addition, Martel continues to serve as a member of the LFT Military Council. Alright, so I guess that's all the research we can do now. Uh, still don't have enough to put these puzzle pieces together. So let's head out this way. Hello, Mr. Hologram. I am a projection of our regent, Perry Roden. Here you will see the most important... Thank goodness that's been shut down. Even attack like that sometimes can have its good points. A cleaning robot doing what it does best. Cleaning. Alright, so we got a bunch of displays here, it looks like. Let's see. Um yeah, so I guess we have a look at the weather and I'm stuck here. Alright, so let's uh go see what these are about. Uh, okay. So, I gotta find the right order. Nope. Ah, uh, which one? Okay, they don't, uh... Attention, attention! Look at the Safety weather, and I'll look at the weather, and I'm stuck is here. Please evacuate the upper floors in accordance with the emergency plan. This is not a drill! Highest Those looking for love must pursue their destiny. If you seek truth, you must find the undying myth. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Uh, what's that all about? Okay. 
uh, I guess it goes back to normal. I'm just trying to find the start of these. That's why I'm not even reading them yet. Uh, I would think it's one of these, but... Those looking for love must pursue their destiny. If you seek truth, you must find the undying myth. Hurry. 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 Who's writing me these cryptic messages? Oh, so that must be random. There we go. The Stardust mission. The Stardust, the spaceship where it all started. This hall is basically the let's catch you up on 50, well, it would have been probably closer to 30 years of Harry Roden lore in, you know, 10 minutes. The Stardust, the spaceship where it all started. On 20th of June, 1971 AD, my crew and I landed the Saturn rocket Stardust on the moon. Not far from the lunar south pole, my three companions, Reginald Bull, Clark G. Flipper, Dr. Eric Minoli and I came across some human-like extraterrestrials, the Arcanides. They showed themselves to be arrogant, largely degenerate life forms who considered us humans to be half animals. It took a lot of persuasion on my part to convince the ship's commander, Thora, of our, and particularly my, qualities. Incidentally, she became my first wife. On June 29th, I brought the Stardust back to Earth. We landed in the Gobi Desert. With the help of the Arcanide technology in our possession, my companions and I founded Tyrannia City. This rapidly growing metropolis became the focal point of all the developments to come. So where actually is this on the Earth? This doesn't look like the Gobi Desert. But, okay, so which way? Do I go down this way? Nope. Uh, must be this terminal then. You can hesitate. Boredom you can buy. Die a lingering death. Your loved ones before you. For the moment is too long for love. Thus, hurry, hurry, hurry. Who's writing me these cryptic messages? All right, well, that was a new one this time. Is this... Are these completely out of order? Uh, because these are all, like, year 3000. Okay. Boredom you can buy. Die a lingering death. Attention, Your loved attention. ones before Safety you. Ball, solar for the moment is too is long for love. Please evacuate Thus, the upper floors hurry, in accordance with the emergency hurry, plan. Hurry, this is hurry. not a drill. Highest Who's level. writing me these cryptic messages? Dude, I just want to see... Okay, that's talking about another millennium. I think this one was talking about after the expedition. Nope, that's expedition to a dying galaxy. It doesn't really. Those looking for love must pursue the... Who's writing okay, these cryptic I, messages? Okay, I get it. <laughs> Osmocrats. Uh, Solar Residence. 2040. You can... Who's writing me these cryptic messages? Come on. Wrong panel. 3587. Uh, maybe it is. It's this one. Those looking for. Who's writing me these cryptic okay. messages? Well, I, I guess I'll just read them all and. Uh. Figure out the order later. Andromeda and the Masters of the Island. The year 2404 heralded the dawn of a new era for humankind. Using powerful solar transmitters, we were able to penetrate the neighboring galaxy of Andromeda. Here we encountered the Masters of the Island, power-hungry beings who held an entire galaxy in their merciless grip and enslaved its peoples. Even more shocking was the realization that the Masters of the Island were descendants of the Lemur people. The Lemurs were the first people to live on Earth as early as 50,000 BC. War gripped both galaxies. It was only in 2406 that we emerged victorious and were able to liberate the peoples of Andromeda. Alright. The Soul. The year 3540 marked the commissioning of a Terran ship which was to become a legend. On board the six kilometer long ship, history was written whether due to the centuries long odysseys embarked upon by each new crew searching for the Earth or because of its role as an ambassador for the peaceful human race. Uh, yeah, the human race that went to war with another galaxy. <laughs> or as a means to an end 
which sometimes even served the cause of the Cosmocrats. Terra's changing history may have seen larger and more powerful ships, but in terms of aura and symbolic power, the soul remained untouchable. Why is it searching for Earth? I mean, did Earth disappear for a century or something? You can okay, that is not these the messages? one I clicked on. <laughs> these hitboxes can be a little funky sometimes. Encounter with it, immortality. Oh, I think this is supposed to be the second one. Yeah. So they're just completely out of attention, order. Attention, attention. The safety of all solar residence employees is threatened. Please evacuate the upper floors in accordance with the emergency plan. This is not a drill. Okay. Highest alert level. Are you done, PA system? I'd like to read. Encounter with it, immortality. The Arcanides, who reigned over the Milky Way, did not tolerate any rival powers. We humans were forced to hide ourselves from them for many years, during which time, driven by the will to protect ourselves, we developed the secret solar system into a well-defended bastion. In the year 1976, we... But they crash-landed our moon, so uh, don't you think they already know where we are? In the year 1976, we picked up the trail of the cosmic riddle and came into contact with the superintelligence It for the first time. It granted me and a few of my comrades-in-arms access to life-prolonging cell shower treatments and later to so-called cell activators. These pieces of unrivaled technology gave us everlasting life based on constant cell renewal, but did not offer their possessors any protection from a violent death. I've often asked myself whether this gift from it, combined with the mission to unite the peoples of the Milky Way galaxy, is a blessing or a curse. And certainly he seemed to be brooding about that uh, in the introductory video. Okay, we read that one already. So we should have read all four of these because this was the masters of andromeda the seconds that who's writing me these cryptic messages yeah andromeda and the masters of the island so let's go this one new millennium the swarm the next millennium saw the development of star empires striving for independence from the earth Fraternal wars were the order of the day. Atlan and i had our hands full trying to deal with the interests of numerous different power alliances at the same time the arrival of the swarm signaled the end of this phase of expansion. The peoples of the Milky Way became embroiled in events which excuse me, which blew away our conceptions of the high powers of the universe. We learned that there were beings far superior to a superintelligence such as it. Matter wells, cosmic nucleotides, the endless armada, and cosmocrats were now terms requiring research. Those looking for love. Who's writing me these cryptic messages? Superintelligence. Uh, the end of the year 3587 also marked a new beginning. With the advent of the new galactic era, NGE, we began to secretly prepare for the conflict with the negative superintelligence, Seth Apophis, of whom I had learned when speaking to it. In the years 424 to 427 NGE, it came to open combat, which resulted in humankind being drawn ever deeper into the maelstrom of cosmic conflict. I, like Atlan, was awarded the status of Knight of the Deep. This order serves the Cosmocrats in the struggle against the powers of chaos. Since my consecration in Kastchen Cathedral, Attention. I have been surrounded by a psionic aura, which allows particularly gifted beings to recognize me. To At some point, I refused to cooperate with the Cosmocrats and decided to Please follow my own path, the third path. Given by security personnel. Okay, so that's just these four left then. The Solar Residence. Solar Residence is the seat of the Terran government and its galactopolitical branch, the Elf T. It is considered the new emblem of Terra and was built around the end of the 13th century NGE. It floats precisely one kilometer above an artificial lake in the residence park in the heart of the city. It is 1,010 meters tall and has at the tip of its stalk five petals, which give this monument to Terran design its other affectionate name, the Steel Orchid. However, its shining outer shell of tarot steel conceals a bionic construction. Its walls are as superconductive as plant fibers, as stable as honeycomb, and as supple as grass. It was designed by the Siganese bionic engineer Ulan Soso in close collaboration with Swoon Microengineers and created by Terran Bionicians. Furthermore, as a place of retreat and a symbol of our home, the Solar Residence is the point of departure for many adventures, always leading me into the depths of space. Atlan. It was the year 2040 the first time I met Atlan, the Arcanite who had spent 10,000 years in an almost uninterrupted deep sleep on Earth. 
He also carried a cell activator. Our first encounter was unfortunate. However, over the course of decades and centuries, a mutual respect and heartfelt friendship developed. Even today, 3,000 years later, I count Atlan me, alongside um, Reginald Bully Bull as one of my most trusted friends. Together, we are able to shut down the so-called robot regions on Archon and make Atlan the imperator of the Arcanide people. Later, he founded the United Stars Organization, USO for short, a galaxy-wide fire brigade which stepped into the fray whenever the official authorities of the galactic power blocks were at a loss. So, like a joint peacekeeping force, rapid reaction force kind of. The seconds that line your glance are moving away from you. Others are fleeing towards me while I stand here waiting senselessly. Some go away. The others stay. Hurry. 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 Who's writing me these cryptic messages? Alright, so that's a third one. Thorgan. Subsequent decades were dominated by the Cosmocrat schemes, the consequences of which were beyond my knowledge. The responsibility for all people weighed down heavily upon me. I decided to take up an offer from the superintelligence IT and to involve the peoples of the Milky Way in the so-called Thorgon. This movement was set in motion by several superintelligences. The idea was to undercut the struggle for power between the Cosmocrats and the Kaotarks, and to create attention. neutral areas Receive where life could develop independently from threat. higher powers. Plan failed. Once again, we people were in danger of being crushed between the forces of good and evil. The after-effects of this eternal conflict can still be felt. The freedom to travel in space and thus to spread life was dramatically restricted by the Cosmocrats. Perhaps there are more terrible dangers in store for us Terrans. Perhaps they're only just beginning to take effect. And our last terminal here. Monos. Whilst returning from an expedition we had led to the dying galaxy of Tarkin, my comrades and I were drawn into a so-called stasis field. We became fully aware of the nature of this phenomena only when we came free and realized that 695 years had passed by around us. Darkness had descended over the Milky Way. An unknown power had sealed off the galaxy from outside intruders and oppressed its peoples. It was to be five years until 1147 NGE before we were able to kill Monos, the oppressor, and liberate the peoples of the Milky Way from servitude. Alright, so that's, uh, I guess a brief Lork recap for, uh, Perry. Uh, I will say, I have some concerns about this government. Like, he's just been the leader of humankind since, what, 2000? Getting some real strong God Emperor vibes here, like from a Warhammer. Uh, not exactly uh, an ideal system of government, I think. Oh, Ulan Soso, he's the guy who designed this. Okay, that's why he shows up here. Uh, not much to see here. Uh, come on, do 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 do. The singing sounds like a siren. I don't know how Manjo can stand it. That's probably why she's hardly here. So this must be her office, then? Londra's office. Since our son DeLorean is no longer with us, we've really been nothing more than good friends. But since I found out she's in danger, my feelings for her have changed. Of course, worry about that, not, like, you know, her safety or anything. All you can see is a bulge where the door plate should be. You'd need x-ray eyes to be able to read the numbers. Mandra has her own idea of privacy. Pretty conceited. All right. And it looks like we have another transporter here, so let's hop in. Hmm, let's see where this transmitter takes me. Residence Parliament. And this isn't the Residence Parliament. Stop there, Regent Roden. What the? This is the high-risk safety zone. The airspace above Tarania is not safe. And what happened here? Mandra Diamond has been abducted. What? By whom? We don't know yet. The robots that assaulted us seem to be of non-Terran origin. An unknown make. What about the transmitters? Part of the main positronics controls were hit. Only the last station accessed is active. We're working on it, Regent. But please, you must leave now. I'm under strict orders. Yeah, from Bully. If I have to. Alright, so I think... Uh... That might, we were supposed to go this way before going the other way, but 
Uh, so now Perry knows Mondra's been attacked. The initial purpose of the attack by the extraterrestrial robots was to abduct Mondra from the resident's terrace. As security regulations do not allow me access to the terrace, I'm going to have to distract the soldiers in order to get a better look around. Yeah, so, alright. Well, we've got some new things to plug into the uh, computer, at least. So, let's do that. Alright, actually, first, real quick, Ulan Soso, Sagani's bionics engineer designer of the Solar Residence, and Mantra Diamond, Perry's best friend and mother of his child, former League service agent, currently active in cultural charity work. Okay, so she does have a known military background. Uh... There we go. Ulan Soso was born on Sega on the 21st of August, 1134 NGE. As a small child, he was evacuated with his parents prior to the attack by the Kintero. Like many Siganese, they settled on Camelot under the protection of the Camelot Organization. There, the presence of scientists from all over the galaxy encouraged Ulan's training as an engineer. While still on Camelot, he was awarded a doctorate and qualified as a professor of micromathematics and microengineering. His greatest interest, however, is in bionics. He encountered the swoon on expeditions and scientific programs and was fascinated by their technology. Many of his innovative calculations and ideas still in use today probably originated from these encounters. He was the first to succeed in breeding living organisms for raw materials in a species-appropriate manner, enabling them to be used in technology. Materials such as alluvial contactoplast, Arachmer, and many others were developed in his laboratory. His greatest creation, however, is the design of the Solar Residence, the entire shell of which is formed by an organism that protects and insulates, similar to the bark of a tree, as well as handling and building supply and waste disposal functions. His calculations were based on a code, which is extremely uncommon these days, the Swoon Omega Decimal Minuscule. You can now download an open source version of this code. Oh, okay. Could be useful. Swoonish Omega Decimal Minuscules with the Arcanide and Terran Decimal System for Clarity. Okay. So this gives us a full key to, uh, uh, for the door numbers. And Mantra Diamond. Mantra Diamond was born a Gilija Tikari on Horikos on 21st of September, 1256. She spent her youth as a circus performer in various worlds within the League of Free Terrans and adopted the pseudonym Mondra Diamond. In 1279 NGE, she applied to the Terran League service and was accepted. While on a mission together, she and Perry developed an intimate relationship and DeLorean was conceived. The child was born after an extremely long pregnancy, lasting 11 months. Afterwards, Mondra joined the crew of the Soul, with whom she traveled 18 million years into the past. There, DeLorean became chronicler to the superintelligence it and Mondra lost her child forever. Perry was unable to be present during that time and therefore never set eyes on his son. Due to their long separation and bitter experiences, Mondra's feelings for Perry cooled markedly, but they decided to remain friends. Following her return to the Milky Way, Mondra Diamond joined the staff of Julian Tifler, the League Foreign Minister. Since then, Mondra's intelligence, experience, and loyalty have enabled her to rise to the position a special purpose under Secretary of State of the LFT. Meanwhile, her relationship to Perry Roden has indeed developed into a deep friendship. It has also become apparent that Mondra Diamond does not age. The reasons for this are as yet unknown. Mondra is heavily involved in archaeology, history, and culture, and is currently occupied with the creatorship of an, of an exhibition on the myth of the Eilichim, Museum of Intergalactic Relations on Titan. Alright. Oh, so we looked up that one guy just to get the decimal numbers. Uh, which isn't really necessary since I think they give us most of the, the numbers. So let's look in Bully's room now. How am I supposed to find anything here? I don't suppose Bully will ever change, no matter how many cleaning robots he confiscates. Bully's cleaning robot, poor little thing. There's certainly a lot to do here. Alright, ooh, what's this? 
A remote control like the one Bully always uses. Perhaps I can use that later. Yoink. All right, let's see. Oh, there is a lot of stuff. I think this one's supposed to be... Yeah, so that's delayed showing where the robot was. Uh, I guess let's look at this. No idea what kind of ships those are. Excuse me. All right. Well, that's a uh, uh, triplane. No idea what kind of ships. I think those that's are. the Fokker that um, the Red Baron flew, probably. All right. What do we got here? Oh, he's got freaking robot there. Bully is here. Smiley, smiley. The bully with love. Best wishes from Andromeda. Oh, he's got these little banners. That's kind of nice. This Discovery class Omni carrier looks like the Leaf Erickson. It is. Nice to see my first flagship among Bully's models. I imagine that uh, Perry wrote in model kits are a thing in Germany. <laughs> ah, there are no words to describe how much I hate these blue ships. Every time they turned up, it meant nothing but trouble. This one's missing a piece. It just says, Lercier. That name rings a bell. The Marco Polo, our first carrier class ultra battleship. Back then, they were using the newly developed Dimmy Sextra Drive. I've been on so many expeditions with it. All right, I thought there were four things here. Uh, is that just the robot that it was seeing? Yes, okay. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll... Move on to the next little bit here, which is his computer. Bully's password. Hmm. As far as I know, he changes it all the time. Usually he uses the name of one of his model ships. But which one? Probably the one that's missing a piece. Hey, there's a gun there. Oh, that's part Bully's of the password. Hmm. hit box as far for as the I know, computer. He changes it all the time. Bully really seems to work in this office. Probably more on his hobby, though. <laughs> Bully really seems to work in this office. Probably more on his hobby, though. The Stardust. It all began with her. Alright, so let's see what else we have. Uh, something down there. Bully really seems to work in this oh. office. Probably more on his hobby, though. I think that's just the Stardust again. The Stardust. It all Bully's, cleaning. Bully's cleaning robot. Poor little thing. There's uh, a lot to do here. Let's look at that remote control. Uh, okay, where's my mouse? There we go. Wing Swing GT5000 Soft Glide. Remote control for model gliders, spaceships, or planes. Okay. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Oh, can't use that to turn it off. Uh, I think we might have some things to do, though. All right, let's see if we can get those goggles from him. I'd never met you until today, Regent. And now, so often. It's just a shame that circumstances are so... unfortunate. Give me your goggles. May I borrow those? I need to use them for now, but we can talk about that later. All right, so he actually was healing certainly something. certainly didn't skimp on the artillery. Getting through that tarot steel isn't exactly what you'd call a piece of cake. Is that... They certainly didn't okay. skip on... Oops. Getting so, through that tarot steel isn't exactly what you'd call a piece of cake. So I thought he was just, uh... Um... Healing, quote-unquote, the steel and, like, fixing microfractures, but he's actually healing the frame of it. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Uh, what can we do? Can we talk to him again? How may I help you this time, Regent? Uh... It looks pretty Arconite to me. <laughs> Something seems to be wrong with this remote control. Ah, yes. Let me see. Hmm. Looks like a condensing duct is out of place. There we are. It's as good as new. Cool, I didn't even know something was wrong with it. <laughs> so, ah, this is probably what we Sorry, gotta do. But there's nothing I can do for you. I'm not a positronic specialist. 
All right. Um, so what's all? It's just this. Just uh. It's a terminal for manually coordinating all right. various maintenance units. Perhaps one of them could help me get out of this. Place. This service is currently not available for technical reasons. Oh, we can't even use it. Okay. Well, ah, uh, okay, I get it. That's why we gotta. Come on. Do, 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 do. Uh, maybe he can call tech for it. Can you repair the maintenance terminal in the room back there? I'm really sorry, but I'm just a bionic. Maybe I can call for someone who would know how to handle that. That would be very helpful. That could take a while, though. All the upper-level transmitters are down. I had to be flown in. Nice view of Terrania. It's pretty windy. Up. All right, so that should uh, hopefully get a fix on that. Um, I do want to visit our office again just to plug the. Uh, oh, actually, they're oh, door plates. Barry Roden, Terranian Regent, Knight of the Deep. Atlan, Chairman of the USO, Knight of the Deep. The debris and shards of the Globosphere. It would have taken quite an impact to break this gamma glass. Then we have Reginald Bull, President's Minister for League Defense, with a post-it note saying, Bully. And let's see who this is. Gucky, Savior, savior of the Universe, Omnipresent Warrior, and more besides. Really? He has a talking chipmunk on his crew? Okay, I guess no judgment. Uh, here we go. The terminal used to control the cleaning robots and other maintenance units is damaged. I've ordered the bionic on the outer platform to call a technician who can deal with the problem. Attention. The solar residence defense system has been Perhaps I can borrow the thermal Please scan glasses he uses to, to, dam to examine the damage outer hall. Not a drill. Please keep calm There's not a single visible clue in Bully's office, but his positronic is sure to contain something useful. I'll need to know his password to access it. It's usually on the name of one of his shuttle models. Uh, so let's... I guess walk around until that technician comes in. Uh... Hello? Technician. You may not enter the terrace, Regent. There are still a number of interference fields which must be removed, and a lot of extremely sensitive anti-shield capsules still lying around. What were they used for? We presume they were used to break down Mandra's defense shield. Although she's a highly trained special agent and knows how to defend herself, she would have been powerless against so many attackers without her personal shield. Yes, and who were her attackers? I can't provide any information on the incident right now. I must ask you to leave the terrace. You're under strict orders. I know. All right, well, we got a little more information out of that. Can we get in here? Probably not. Mandra's office. Since our son DeLorean is no longer with us, we've really been nothing more than good friends. But since I found out she's in danger, my feelings for her have changed. All right, so let's let's go to our office and put the um, the Omega Decimal and the Wing Swing in, and go from there. Maybe ask that guy for his thermal glasses again. We could check for new messages too, see if anything's been incoming. Um, Swoonish Omega Decimal minuscules, code developed by the Swoon Microengineers on Swoofin and represented by a 10-digit matrix of 8-dimensional minuscules. The linear sequence of the minuscules is not important, while the representation in the dimensions is subject to a predetermined algorithm defined by the position of the previous and subsequent minuscule. The code is not, therefore, a decimal system as we understand it. Instead, it is a key of 10 minuscules which influences a 10 to the power of 8 matrix of 8-dimensional objects. Three minuscules are sufficient to constitute an information unit of the code. The code is not often encountered outside Swoofin, as its programming basics are closely linked to the Swoon's bioorganic way of life and thinking. The underlying concept and the natural sciences derived from it is one of pan-organism. 
This concept does not, for example, distinguish between animate and inanimate objects and is extremely difficult for humanoids to grasp. All right, now let's see about this remote. The Wing Drive GT5000 Soft Glide, a rechargeable remote control of the Mark uh, Garvin Tech for all model flyers with primary and secondary positronical steering unit with rubberized ergo grip levers, large touch display and announcement for own programming, excuse me, or editing of up to eight lines of text, expandable for all usual systems by ZV Expand module, energy flow scanning for intuitive control, the range of the signal, Mounts to up to three kilometers during trouble-free environment. Oh, that's actually a pretty powerful thing. Uh, okay. Okay, so nothing new there yet. Let's go and uh, try to get some glasses out of that guy. Hello there. I'd never met you until today, Regent. And now, so often. It's just a shame that circumstances are so... unfortunate. May I borrow those? I need to use them for now. But we can talk about that later. Uh... Okay. Um... Do 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 do. Do you have anything? How may I help you this time, Regent? Uh... You don't have anything. Regent, sir, I apologize. But that exceeds my remit. I have been ordered to guard this glider here. Everything else goes beyond the scope of my duties. And that's all he says, no matter what you bring on him. And obviously, these people are just like, don't you know him better than, than, uh, than I do? Which is, you know, a fair point, since they've never met them in their life. Ah, uh, so, what is there to do? What am I missing? He won't give me the glasses, which I need to get in the Mondra's office. I need the technician to show up to repair that terminal. Otherwise, uh, I can't, uh, have a distraction for the, um... That's Atlan's office. He's oh. off doing something to save our galaxy as usual. It looks like his door's been damaged, too. Uh, without that terminal, I can't distract the guards. It won't let me pick up Bully's gun. Uh, and this needs the goggles to see through. All you can see is a bulge where the door plate should be. You'd need x-ray eyes to be able to read the numbers. Mandra has her own idea of privacy. Pretty conceited. The singing sounds like a siren. I don't know how Manja can stand it. That's probably why she's hardly here. And there's nothing else. No. Just him whining about, oh, now that she's gone, I miss her. Uh, any more cryptic messages? You can hesitate. Boredom you can buy. Die a lingering death. Your loved ones before Tension. you. Solar for the moment is too has been long for love. Please Thus, keep hurry. And clear to hurry. This hurry. Is not a drill. Who's writing Please me these cryptic messages? A cleaning robot doing personnel. what it does best. Cleaning. Alright, let's try a few other things here. Uh, we can check to see if we've got any new messages, I suppose. My cleaning robot. I've oh. named it Piggy because it eats anything that falls on the floor. Now, let's see. Nothing new yet. Looks like the news blackout is really working. Not a single word from Bully. That's unfortunate. Bully's cleaning robot, poor little thing. There's certainly a lot to do here. Doesn't work. Uh... Not really compatible. Bully's cleaning robot. Poor little thing. There's certainly a lot to do here. Okay. Yeah, there's four things there. 
But then when you get to this view, there's only three things. Wait a second. Ah, there are no ah, there are no words to describe how much I hate these blue ships. Every time they turned up, it meant nothing but trouble. This one's missing a piece. It just says Mercy. Bully's password. Nope, no, nope. No. <laughs> as far as I know, he changes it all the time. Usually he uses the name of one of his model ships. But which one? Alright, so that's just gonna talk about the Marco Polo. Uh, is there something at the edge of the screen here? Nope, nope. Nope, it was just showing from the last screen, I think. But yeah, there's four... Oh, there are four things there. And we only get three of them. Ah, there are no words. Nope. Ah, there are no nope. words to describe. That I want. Okay, there we this go. This discovery we class Omni Carrier. Look. See, it almost looks like there might be stuff there we could pick up, but. Uh, okay, so we're not getting anything in here. I have a feeling this cleaning robot might have the piece we're looking for, given how messy his room is, but we can't reverse that right now. Not until the positronics are repaired. Dude, give me your goggles, please. I'd never met you until today. May I borrow those? I need to use them for now. Uh. Can I like help you, please, so I can get them back? All right, let's. It's a terminal for manually coordinating the various maintenance units. Perhaps one of them could help me get out of this place. I should definitely get someone to repair it. This service is currently not available for technical reasons. Alright, still can't. Come on, Perry. There we go. I guess no one's going to question why he's just jogging around everywhere. I'm really sorry, but I'm just a bionic. I'm really sorry, but okay. I'm just a bionic. So he can't call him in again. I'm actually kind of stuck. That sounded like a helicopter or something. Being robot doing what it be does best cleans. I suppose we could try to interrogate the people above uh, one more time, see if those guards know anything else. At least, oh hey, person now. You called for me, Regent Rodan. Are you the technician who was supposed to come and get the positronics working again? Yes, I'm sorry about the delay, but we're in a state of total chaos at the moment. It took some time for a shuttle to become available to fly me to the terrace. So the transmitters are still down? It looks like an impact has played havoc with the biocomponents of the building's positronic. Some of its information seems to be looped. It's just a small thing, really. But what with the security and the checks everywhere? Cool, so, uh... Can you get it going again? I'm not sure if I know how to handle the system down there. After all, it's only the temporary electronic system. Nobody has used it since the initial construction. The technology may be outdated. I'll see what I can do. All right, well, we'll give them some time to do that and let's interrogate these guys again. Regent, the terrain is still not secured. I must ask you to leave the terrace. All right. I guess we'll just have to stalk him and uh, watch over his shoulder until he repairs that system. Because we don't have much else to do at the moment. Ba -ba -ba -da.
In the last 16 of the Colonial Cup? Imagine that! All I want to know is when they're going to fire that coach. Ah, good that you're here. I was just about to come looking for you. What's up? Just as I thought. The code is very... Uh, uncommon now. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do if I don't know the code. What code? The building's biopositronic component uses an outdated algorithm that I'm not familiar with. Oh, really? But if the positronic is part of the bio component, then it's also part of the design. It would be best if you asked Ulan Soso, the designer of the bionic component. As far as I know, he's still alive. And it should be easy for you as regent to talk to him. Well, yes, in theory. But under these circumstances. Thanks for the information, anyway. Oh, I think I got just the thing for him. Would this help? Oh, well, that explains a lot. Swoonish Omega Decimal Minuscules. It'll just take a little while for the Electro Circuits to close again. Alright. Let's talk to him now. I'd never met you until today, Regent. And now, so often. It's just a shame that circumstances are so... unfortunate. I need to borrow these. May I borrow those? Of course, Regent. I don't need them right now, but I'd like to have them back later. Yes, of course. Well, I only need them for one thing. All right. Thermal scan glasses. All right, so for investigating objects with different temperatures. And let's go see what the database has to say about this. Oh, that's new. It's doing a thing. Ah, finally, someone who's qualified. Tamira Sakrahan, the first Terran. Maybe she can help me get out of this place. Perry, you're still alive. That's good. Shouldn't I be? What? Alive. The situation is much too serious for silly jokes. What do you know? Not much. Terra's defensive shield has been partially deactivated and remote-controlled robots have attacked the residents. How could this happen? That's what I'm trying to find out. The situation isn't exactly pleasant for me as the first Terran. After all, the last time the residence was attacked, four years ago, my predecessor was... Uh... I haven't forgotten that. Morenzi was my friend. Well then, it seems obvious to ask who the target was this time. They've abducted Mandra. I'm sorry to hear that. What are your plans? There's nothing I can do. Bully's practically locked me in this place, and who knows where he is. Bully, is he using his authority against you? I hope not. Perry, let me see what I can do for you. I'll be in touch as soon as I know more. Tamira, wait. What was that all about? Is everyone against me today, or what? I secured Tamira the position of first Terran in the first place, and now she just runs off and leaves me hanging? What the hell is going on here? Wow, a uh, little entitled there. <laughs> uh, just because you... Again, this goes back to getting the God Emperor vibes for... Uh, you know, he almost seems like a dictator. A benevolent one, maybe, to be sure, but a dictator nonetheless, where he's like, oh, well, these people owe their positions to me, so they should do what I want, no questions asked. Thermal Scan Ocular. This ocular, patented by Seinsford and Pavis, gives the wearer infrared vision. Although the device is worn like a pair of glasses, the super-sensitive infrared scanners transmit data via the frame through the forehead and directly into the visual center of the wearer's brain. This obviates the need for bulky optical converters and enables the use of more substantial sensors. These can now detect the slightest fluctuations in temperature and represent them in high contrast color. This is a particularly robust portable model which can be used on construction sites and in field research. All right. Seems perfect for uh, what we need for. And let's go all the way here, all the way back. Yeah, a lot of back and forth, you know, as is tradition for adventure games. All right. Let's see if the glasses live up to the bionics' promises. 
just as I thought. I can see Mondra's room number underneath the bulge. 256. Alright. So, oh, that should do it. Gotta get him through the threshold of the door. But now we should at least be able to open Mondra's office. And we should also be able to use... Uh, Uh, the, the, what, what you might call it, the positronic control panel down there. Alright, so, here you can have them back. But he's only just lent them to me. Why do I need to give them back to him now? Wow, okay, well, fuck you, Perry. <laughs> We're done with them. We can ask him back if we need it. Alright, well, we'll just have to stop by him before we make our getaway. Which hopefully should be pretty obvious. Hello, what's this? Oh, that's a lunchbox. At first glance, I thought it was his toolbox. Lunchbox, a plastic container for storing food items for short periods of time. Content, soy light cheeseburger, Malika super soft tender bar flavor, chocolate liquid flavored with pear pentant fruit. And you could actually, uh show it to him and I think he takes it away from you and then you gotta steal it back again but uh oh. two five six uh so six is gonna be this weird squiggly five is a new one so let's look at this code five is this underlined circle and two is two lines I guess that makes sense. There we go. So that should unlock Mandra's office. Maybe, maybe now we have to, uh, we can give it back. Maybe it just wasn't scripted to uh, let us give it back until we've unlocked her office. But he's only just lent them to me. Why do I need to give them back to him now? Or we can just continue being an asshole, okay. <laughs> uh, let's... Go and, uh, see what the computer says about the lunchbox for shits and giggles. Food container, diet model, made by the Ergo and Retro Plastics company Optima Home Manufacture. Primitive container for keeping food a short while, commonly referred to as a lunchbox. The pair in plastic, which is crisis cross, or crisscrossed with superconductive cooling threads, is capable of conserving the food inside for up to a month. Highly sensitive solar cells in the box's lid ensure an adequate power supply even in poor light. OHM hopes you enjoy your meal. Yeah, I don't. I don't need food preserved for a month in a lunchbox. That's what I have a refrigerator for. All right, let's. Uh, come on. Do 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 do. All right, let's go in Mondra's office now. Ooh, lots of stuff here. And something protected by a force field. Interesting. This shelf's been filling up since Mondra became interested in archaeology. This shelf's been filling up since Mondra became interested in archaeology. Mondra must be keeping something extremely important in there if she's using illegal military shields to protect it. <laughs> Hello. Mondra's carnivorous beast. As far as I know, its secretion even dissolves bones. I have no idea how to appease it, but it obeys Mondra's every word. Uh, Carnanova. Ooh. Let's go and research that. Again, sorry about the back and forth. Uh, oh, hey, the, um. So these kind of gray out when you've accomplished your memo. 
Uh, Mondra's room looked exactly as it always does, except for all the archaeological artifacts. To top it off, her coffer is, is secured by a military defenses shield, and to access her desk, I'll need to find a way to get past her carnivorous plant. Well, they said they were clearing up, um, basically, empty shield grenades or something on the terrace. So once we distract them, we can probably grab that. And then use that to bypass those shields. I think we can use the lunchbox to get past uh, Carnanova here. Tetrafolia. Tetrafilophilium musicipula. Uh, carnivore plant is the only species of the monotype genius. That word. Or, oh, that's a di slightly different word. Tetrafilophilium. Phyophyllum Plophos, and together with two other monotype genera, belongs to the Plophosian hookleaf plants. They are long lived succulents which can grow to between 30 centimeters and 2 meters tall, depending on their location and eating habits. They are active, sticky traps with tentacles, which also produce digestive enzymes, protease, peroxidase, and esterase. Uh, catching smaller insects such as flies, beetles, butterflies, and small spiders seems to serve young plants as an additional source of nutrients, while fully grown plants also attack larger mammals. The root system is fairly well developed. After successful pollination, the plant's white or pale pink flowers, which have a sweet fragrance, develop disc to umbrella-shaped red seeds 5 to 12 centimeters across. Currently cultivating these plants is considered to be a very involved process, as loving dedication and communication with them are essential for them to thrive. Extreme caution is required in the case of fully grown plants. Caution: It is advisable to approach only plants that have already been fed. Nothing edible is available. Zerg flies, the electrostatic discharges of which have a calming and euphoric effect on these plants, are recommended to distract and calm them. Zerg flies. I could have come up with that myself. During one of our last dinners together out on the terrace, Mandra told me that she breeds those pests up there in the flower pots. Okay, so we need to actually get up there. We can't just feed it the lunchbox, unfortunately. Uh, okay. So let's go see if What's-His-Face is finished with the computer yet. Oh, okay. Could I have my thermoscan glasses back, please? I'm lost without them. Of course, but I could really use them. Can I buy them from you? Buy them? I need them myself at the moment, but we can discuss that possibility again later. Okay. Uh, I wonder if now we can pick up the solar. Curious what we'll need them for, since Perry seems pretty intent on having them. been able to activate the controls for the cleaning robots so far. The others will take a bit longer for me to fix. The decimal minuscule part is more difficult than I thought. Hey, have you seen my lunchbox anywhere? Uh, no. Why do you ask? I need to eat first. No yummy in my tummy. Bon appétit. Enjoy. All right, do we have autonomy again? <laughs> he just blinks out of existence. All right, so the shame. Only the control for the cleaning robots. Let's see what these nifty little helpers can do for me. Let's send them the up to the cleanup order Paris. has been initiated. All right, so now let's run all the way up there. Nice view of Terrania. It's pretty windy up here. All right. Do 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 do. I will say the one other quality, like if you're going to be doing this much back and forth, it could have used the map for uh, for kind of just teleporting to unlock places. 
Oh wow, it sent all the cleaning robots there. Yeah. All right. So hopefully the guards will be ch too busy chasing them down, and then I can call him back to Bully's office. Hopefully find that missing part of his, and uh, hopefully get some grenades out of it. Oh, they fried Bully's cleaning robot. Let's see what's inside it. Oh, okay, that saves me a step. Oh my goodness, what a mess. Oh well, let's see if we can find anything useful. This looks like the missing piece from Bully's space shuttle. The rest is just trash. Alright, now what do we have to look at up here? Uh, the global sphere. Oh, that must be uh, a big old shield disruptor. Here's part of a robot. We need to find out more about these mysterious attackers regardless of Bully's orders. I'll explain everything to him later. The attacker's disintegrators did a good job. This glass dome used to have a roof. All right, what else is there to look at? Uh... I had breakfast here with Mondra recently. We enjoyed the beautiful view. Let's see how far we can Whatever get. Whatever happened here, I need to find out why. Mondra's in danger and none of my so-called friends seem to care in the least. Who or what was here to abduct Mondra seems to have been firing pretty indiscriminately. And with a kind of thermal beamer from the looks of it. I like how they're just completely ignoring me now. Alright, uh... There we go. What's this? Hopefully nobody will notice if I take two or three of these anti-shield capsules with me. Okay, so that's the, uh... The thing we need. Alright. Sword flies. Mondra told me they're those little dots that look like flying LEDs. When they sting you, though, you'd think they were stadium floodlights. All right, let's uh, pop the lunchbox in there. See if we can trap some of the flies. Our diet plan today provides you with an adequate meal consisting of one soya light cheeseburger sandwich, 17 calories, and one Malika Super Soft Tender Bar. Flavor? chocolate four calories a liquid with pear pentin fruit flavor zero calories is provided to round off the meal we hope you enjoy your meal gotcha wow dude i i get i can relate to wanting to lose weight but uh you really uh should eat more than that I had breakfast here with mondra recently we enjoyed the beautiful view Wow, certainly don't have a warm fuzzy if uh, Earth's best can be f um, basically tied up by a couple of cleaning robots. Alright, so let's go to our computer first. Come on. Do, 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 do. Because this is going to be our last chance to access it unless uh, he can... Unless we get like a... There's nothing more for me to do here right now. In this state of emergency, all I can do is provide temporary first aid for the injured organisms. Here are the glasses. Oh, thanks a lot. What do I owe you? Regent, I would be honored for you to have them. Oh, well, thank you. So I guess we get those back. All right. Uh, so we solved a few more things. Okay, so nothing new has actually been added. Uh, let's see if it reacts to having the circ flies in there. Nope, no change in the description. Just in, uh, there. Classic component, probably part of a model kit made by Cravel on a 1-500 scale. Its shape suggests that it could be a Gattiser Blues Discus vessel. Probably the discontinued Blues Destroyer YYII with Molkax armor model from the 1500 series. There, this is also indicated by the clumsily applied bluish flock coating on the surface. While the joints and insertion points have been ground, they show no traces of glue, suggesting that the part had been prepared for final assembly. Head of a combat robot, which... Uh, the severed, probably by Mandra, head of a robot, probably one that attacked her. Hey, we saw that happen. 
unidentifiable technology. A violently detached section of the control unit of an unknown robot technology. Judging by its armored structure, this is a unit for use in warlike close combat situations. The armor of naturally obtained Molkak suggests that this is a blues or a Gatzer blues technology. However, this form of armor is no longer in use. The allocation of structure and construction is markedly inconsistent and ambiguous, leading to inconclusive results. The positronic used, however, is a Gatisar blues technology, and the built-in transmitting and receiving unit suggests the possibility of remote control. Why the blues? Don't they have enough to deal with at the moment? That just doesn't make sense. I don't know what the difference between a blue and a Gattisar blue is, but into shield capsules. Hypocoherence capsules. Widespread offensive weapon system for destabilizing defensive. Excuse me. For destabilizing defensive and individual shields in ground level combat operations. The hypersensitive sensor creates a retroscopic force field possessing the same energy matrix, matrix as an object inside the shield. This allows the capsule, capsule to be integrated into the shield's force field, where it uses targeted energy blasts to deactivate the shield generator. When used against individual shields, these energy bursts also have a paralyzing effect on the wearer of the shield. Capsules can also be accurately fired and remotely controlled using the Whistler Company's KWM-307 mortar attachment for all current hand ray guns and launchers. Huh, interesting. Alright. So, first let's snoop on, uh, I guess since we're already here and to try to save on some backtracking at least, let's snoop on, uh, Bully's computer here. That fits. So the blue ship is called Le Cly Lysiae. Okay, so, alright, I'm sorry, I gotta go back and model the Gatesian discus vessel from Bully's collection. Collapse defensive and individual shields. So, Blues is like the nickname they have. Gatesian, I guess, is their real name. Oh, hey, a message. Mr. Regent Penny Roden, Consul Igalanth Peril. To what do I owe the honor? It has come to my attention that the honorable people of Gateza have been the target of inexplicable accusations. It appears that one of your military special units has conducted an attack on the Solar Residence. That's an absolutely deplorable accusation. Our Positronic has identified this robot head as Blue's technology. I can neither confirm nor deny that from here. These robots penetrated the defensive shield and attacked the Solar Residence. I can assure you that unfortunately we've not yet been able to develop such efficient combat units. Even if that were the case, we would never use them to provoke an armed conflict which neither of us want or can afford for absolutely no reason. And you can also be assured that if we had conducted the attack, you surely wouldn't be here to talk about it. Now what was that all about? Is there no one with a bit of common sense around? Someone who could explain all of this to me? Wow, we just scanned that. What, did the computer tell everyone when we scanned it? <laughs> uh, okay, let's... Lekai Lerkai was a famous Gattisar Blues spaceship commander. As his full name is not comprehensible to human ears, he is simply called Leclerc in Terran histi Histriography. In June 2327, Leclerc discovered a Terran station on the 14th planet of the Verse system. Using multiple ships, he was able to destroy the commando unit's headquarters. A large proportion of the Terrans managed to escape through a transmitter, and the enemy ship was detonated. Leclerc led a raiding patrol himself and was able to capture 48 Terrans alive. He was promoted for this deed and henceforth commanded a disc ship of almost twice the size, 1,000 meters in diameter. During a patrol flight, he received signals from the Vegrat system, where Molkex had recently been harvested. A terror worm had hatched late, and Leclerc ship needed to collect it. Irritated by this trifle, Leclerc reached the planet on the 26th of November, 2327, where he was lured to a secluded valley by the terror worm Tommy and his older companion, Pertail. A Terran ambush then attacked the Molkex ship using the first Terran-developed anti-Molkex bombs. Despite the loss of his Molkex armor, Leclerc tried to bring the battle to a successful conclusion but failed due to the idiotic reactions of his subordinates. Clark died standing at the pull gun of his battleship, killed by the Pateral's energy blast. Um. 
air work. Oh, of course, Leclerc. Our first success against the Blues Mole Cake's armor. Why didn't I think of that? I'm, I'm a little confused, because it almost sounds like it was an ambush by... Well, then was it a valley? I... I do not have the background for this game. At least for some of the finer points of the lore. Alright. So, now... Bully's password. Hmm. As far as I know, he changes it all the time. Usually he uses the name of one of his model ships. But which one? Okay, I'm inside. Let's see what Bully's been up to recently. Oh. The last message he received was from Mandra. Bully, meet me on the terrace at 1400 hours. I've left a message for Perry, so hopefully he'll come too. I really need to know what you've been able to dig up on Martel so far. If you don't bring me the data this time, I'll have to find a way to access his labs myself. See you soon. Access Martel's labs? Does this have something to do with the message in my info terminal? And which data? What's going on here? Let's see. There's a plan of the defensive shields. Bully opened this one just a little while ago. Could he have had something to do with the abduction? No, no way. What else do we have here? All right, so... I guess he opened this one. Um... Yeah, this one seemed to protect us for the most part. Hangar area. So now we actually have a bit of a map. By the looks of things, Bully had Martel under surveillance, but why? And why didn't he tell me anything about it? Hey. Okay. Who's that? Is that the uh, Arcanite from the intro? Blueprints of Martel's Robotics Institute in the Waringer Academy. I have a feeling I'll need these later. All right, let's zip that to our little thing. Listen, machine. buddy, take your hands off. <laughs> Barry, it's you. Yeah, looks like it. What are you doing with my positron ink? I'm looking for answers, since you're not giving me any. Perry, this is a really bad time. It really made me nervous. Believe me, I'll explain everything later. Bully, I don't understand a single word. Well, great. Now, that didn't exactly inspire confidence. <laughs> All right. So I assume he's got a good reason that or if he is responsible for this, he either has a damn good reason or he's mind controlled. Okay, so. Yeah, most of these are locked down. Let's go and visit. Let's just get the thing in the coffin. And then we'll make one last stop to the computer and hopefully then we should be able to. Um, hopefully the positronic terminal will be fixed and then we can. Grab a glider and make a clean getaway. Mac representation of the premises of the Robotics Institute of the Warring Guard Academy. Alright, so... Well, that'll keep it busy for a while. Alright, so what we got back here? Oh, a lot of stuff. I've never seen a device like this before. It must be one of Mandra's extraterrestrial artifacts. I've never seen a device like this before. It must be one of Mandra's extraterrestrial artifacts. And a book. Mandra's notebook. We don't want it to fall into the wrong hands. And these look like a bunch of Perry Rodin novels. Reference books, encyclopedias, the big book of Terran myths. Probably books that Mandra needs for her research. <laughs> All right, Mandra's notebook. Uh, notes? Oh, this is going to be... Oh, wow. Um, okay. We're going to... We're going to save that for next time, because this has already gone on a very long time. I kind of want to just finish this level. Alright, let's, uh... Take down the shields. Let's see what these things are good for. What did Mondra want with a broken robot? But it looks familiar somehow. What's this strange piece of glass? Some kind of lens? It must be very valuable for Mondra to keep it so safely hidden. I'd better take it with me. Alright, so... 
Okay, that must be from the book that we took uh, from our journal. Is there anything else? Just want to make sure. Does this just plug into here? I guess that's a yes. <laughs> All right, so we get the artifact I've back. I've never seen a device like this before. It must be one of Mondra's extraterrestrial artifacts. And I guess Perry has nothing to say about it. But I'm guessing that's... Oh, now what? Oh, okay. The terminal's fixed. Okay, I'm reporting back for duty. The Rangers lost, just as I thought they would. We blew them off the field. One, seven to two. Are you interested in football, Regent? Not really. I'm more into baseball. Baseball? <laughs> Whatever. What else should I do? Perry Roden and Richard Clavin, welcome to the Solar Residence. We are currently standing in the Crystal Lounge, and it is the... the, 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 the lounge. Please, take care of that. What do you need him for? I thought it would be nice if that guy wasn't here all the time to... Uh, I'm on my way. Alright, so it's not quite fixed yet. Attention, attention. Also, in case it wasn't obvious, the football he's talking about is European football, which is soccer. Interesting that Harry's in the baseball, though. I didn't think it was that popular with... Germans, but who knows um so let's we have a gajillion things to research now all right so let's start with the floor plan of the robotics institute of the warring gear academy robotics institute robotics deals with the control and development of robots and includes branches of informatics artificial intelligence in particular electrical engineering mechatronics and mechanical engineering the objective of robotics is to bring about a controlled cooperation of robot electronics and robot mechanics through programming. The Robotics Institute in the Warringer Academy at the University of Tarania was founded when the Academy was established in 1331 as a dedicated research and development facility. The Institute was originally directed by the Dean of the Academy himself, Malcolm S. Dalian, but has been managed by Amo Martell, a retired League Fleet Admiral since 1343. Robotics Institute collaborates closely with the other departments to develop completely new prototypes and technologies aimed at managing the technical and technological problems resulting from an increase in hyperimpedance. Okay, so the Mandra's notebook. Notebook. Antiquated, very uncommon form of recording device. Used for written or graphical collections of ideas, comments, and notes of all kind. However, notebook may also be established and kept for a certain purpose. Notebooks exist in many forms, ring-bound, adhesively bound, stapled, hardback, or as a collection of loose-leaf pages held together by a clamp. Ruled, squared, or blank, there's a notebook for every purpose and preference. A notebook differs from a diary in that it usually holds factual notes in which chronology and personal experience play an insignificant role. It is different from a journal in that the notes are not thematically linked. This particular notebook is a book or booklet style with an attached cover. The individual bound cellulose pages can be written on using a writing utensil which just charges a writing fluid. Excuse me. 
This example contains a number of pages covered with writing indicating that it is already in use. Uh, Carrie Levian. Carrie Levian. Carrie is a friendly and open-minded person. As Mondra Diamond's best friend, she also shares her personal her interest in exotic plants and adventures. However, her position as one of Malcolm S. Dalian's assistants and his PA leaves her with almost no time for anything else. Carrie was born on Terra in the Garnaro Quarter of Terrania on 17th of April, 1318 NGE. She grew up in a liberal and tolerant home as the daughter of a professor of xenoarchaeology and an interpreter. She therefore grew up with the multiracial mix of the LFT and learned various different languages at an early age. Her scientific ambitions were fostered from the very beginning. She attends the Payne Hamler Development Program for the Highly Gifted and is studying info informatics and positronic sciences alongside her training as an interpreter and bilingual secretary. At just 24 years of age, Carrie Levian is a trained interpreter and a doctor of artificial intelligence, Dr. Intelligence Artificiosi. As a research assistant at the Institute for Hyperphysics, she assisted in the maintenance and supervision of Dalian's supercomputer Cicero, on which she also based her doctorate, Limitless Artificial Thought Patterns, as early as 1340. She has been an assistant on Malcolm S. Dalian's team since 1342, and as his personal advisor, is also responsible for for the maintenance of Dalian's flying metal tank. Wow. She's 24, she has a PhD, and she's a mere assistant. Jesus. Deactivated service robot from Mantra's possessions. Do, 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 do. Unknown artifact, strange lens-shaped artifact, or object made from a cold and hard substance, which is obviously part of a hollow projector. Extraterrestrial artifact. This object is clearly artificial and has been made using advanced technology, but not by any race known to us. Neither the engraved symbol nor the shape of the object provide any clues to its origins. The substance has such a high energetic density that it cannot be recognized. However, its high oscillation frequency and hyper-energetic radiation indicates that it originates from beyond this universe. Precise identification would be possible only, if at all, with an ultra-high frequency scanner. Alright, so I think that's everything then. Uh, oh, except the robot. Uh, can we combine... Well, it's worth a try, but no. Did I do that wrong? No idea how this is supposed to work. Oh, I could probably just have the other guy fix it for me. Or at least tell me what it needs, and then I can look for it. So we're getting pretty close to the end here, I feel. Alright. Uh, do-do-do-do-do. Fix my robot. Can you get that thing going again? Oh my. That poor thing was hit pretty hard. I'm not sure there's much I can do. I need the information from this robot. It is of the utmost importance. Hmm, let's see. This was custom made by the Robotics Institute. Here. Raiwa, 1708, and the serial number. The activation module is normally underneath the sensor positronic, which would be the atlas vertebra for us. Just enter the serial number. It was very careless of you to show up here. You're putting me and our plans in jeopardy. At least I'm keeping to my part of the agreement. You should have received the drill by now. I don't understand. Abraham, stop it. No recordings right now. Well, I think the little guys had it. Mondra trusted you. I hope I can too. Whatever that was about, I think it would be better if I got rid of that heap of junk now. Quite an acceptable suggestion. Say hi to Mondra for me when you see her. I will. Alright, I think we're probably about done here. Uh, it appears that Amo Martel was holding secret negotiations with the Arcanites behind my back. I'll have to go to the Academy and find him in order to find out what that has to do with Mandra and her research for the Ilchim exhibition. Alright, so... Come on. 
Good, he should be just about done now. Ah, Regent, you're there. Well, that thing up there is operational again. Thanks a lot. You've done me a great favor. Oh, really? Well, I'm not so sure about that. But what do they say? After the meal is before the meal, and a meal lasts 90 minutes. I have no idea what that means. Maybe it's a translation from German that just doesn't translate well. Uh, if that is a German saying, please do tell me what that's supposed to mean, because it does not make sense in English, really. Alright, so... The holographic guide has been projected to another room. Alright. Um... Yeah, so Martel is dealing with the Arcanides for some reason. Uh, I think that's the, the guy, maybe even the woman as well, from the opening cinematic. Uh, we also saw him, them together, the guy and Martel in the pictures that were taken. And this is out of character for what we've researched about Martel, since he's supposed to be like a racist that wants to prove that humans are superior to everyone else. So the question would be, why is he doing this? Hello, Midshipman Pitt Jingles. Sir? It is my pleasure to guide you through the Solar Residence. We are currently in the private glider hangar of the legendary Mondra Diamond. Unlike the other chambers of the Residence, this area is furnished in a more mundane and practical manner. We've completely abstained from unnecessary and distracting adornments. The height at which this hangar is built is worthy of note at 5,500 feet. University of Terrania, Warringer Academy, symbol of hope through science. The Rainbow Dome, the center of the Warringer Academy. The greatest minds in Terran science work there. All right, so with that, we are officially at our next location. So I think we're going to call it there for today. Um, I don't believe we can go back, but I think we have everything we need. Yep, these are all grayed out now. So, and uh, wow, this is a pretty lovely environment. Vaguely reminds me of, um, oh, what was that game called? Schism. Uh, with the floating balloon thingies, well, metal balloon thingies. But uh, in any case, I think that's going to be enough for today. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time. And stay safe out there and we'll see you then.